when I say we need to toggle people into the most progressive understanding they can have, the means we have at our disposal is context, and I will explain that in a moment. But for now, you see here a square labeled A and a square labeled B, right? Do the squares appear to be the same color, or do they appear to be different colors? Different. Right, they appear to be different. But in fact, they're the same. The only thing different on the right-hand side is the addition of those two guidelines, proving to you that on the left, your eye is overcompensating for the shadow cast by the cylinder. So I'm showing you this for, the, for two reasons. The first is that context matters. People do not hear our messages in some sort of perfect tabula rasa state. They hear whatever it is we say to them based on the stories they've been told their whole lives, what they heard on TV last night, what they, had, what they chatted about over breakfast this morning. So we need to understand not just what it is we're saying, but which context that evokes for them. The second reason I'm showing this to you is that those two lines over there, that's my proof. That's my evidence. These are my studies, right? 97 out of 100 climate scientists have studied the longitudinal data. They, right? Economists have proven that raising wages will in fact increase the amount of GDP. Yes? And I want to ask you, those two lines, that proof, that evidence, those studies, does that suddenly make square A and B on the left look the same, or do they continue to look different? Tell the truth. Still, still look different, which is exactly how persuasive facts are, which is to say not at all. <laughs> now, many of you are policy people, and so I had asked for a separate cry room for facts. This is where we have a little pause where you go and be sad about your facts. <laughs> Does anybody need a moment for their facts? So it's not that facts are completely ir irrelevant, although I don't know how you can be alive in America today and ha feel like they are relevant. But as is often said, facts bounce off of frames. A more accurate explanation of the human cognitive processing system would be, I'll see it when I believe it. And this is familiar to us for people who say, I don't see racism, right? I don't see misogyny. I don't see this happening. I don't see that happening. It's not true that people will believe it once they see it. They'll see it once they believe it. So what we need to understand is which frame are we evoking and which frame are we slotting our facts into. So I talked a moment ago about context. The way that we reference context in linguistics is through the much abused and overused word frame. This is not a scary word. It just reminds us that words occur in context. So if I say something even as simple, this is a very famous um, Charles Fillmore example of frames. If I say something even as simple as I went to a restaurant last night, you instantly think of food. You think of waiters and waitresses, utensils, dishes, money changing hands, but you don't think of a circus clown or a hula hoop because you know what a restaurant is. So even a single word evokes a whole host of associated meanings. And as much as we might not want that to be happening, we don't get to pick and choose that. That's actually how language works, and that's how it's instantiated in our brains. Or, as I like to tell my clients, you pay me to tell you that words mean things. So here is a simple example from a study that I did last year, where we were looking at more potent messaging on prescription drug prices. This is a very simple difference where we split the sample between people who were assessing do you, uh, the degree that they are favorable toward on the left prescription drug companies and on the right prescription drug corporations. That's the only difference. And what you're seeing here is that the base, the people who were supportive of our proposition, they hate them bastards either way, right? But the persuadables who were 65% of this nationally representative sample, they flip from net favorable on prescription drug companies to net unfavorable. Because if you think about the word company, what is a company? A company is maybe a small business. It's maybe the corner store. A corporation, on what planet is Pfizer or Gilead or any of these a company, right? And so the same thing happens in San Francisco when they, you know, they're trying to pass a tech tax to create funds for affordable housing. 
On what planet are Google and Facebook companies? They're corporations, they're multinationals. And as we can see, people feel very differently about corporations than they do about companies. Does that make sense?